Balls.co.za. Right, I've got all for the last two years, right? I've been complaining that we don't see enough of South Africa's junior sides. I spotted this week that our, our Bafana under 17s were going through various uh, measurements for FIFA because obviously these days you can't just rely on people people's birth certificates, you have to have them checked. Uh, our under 17s went through those checks this week, all passed, and are about to, to, to get engaged in, in, in a quite important. Um, series of qualifiers. Uh, I've got Dominic Jim Harvey, the head of communications for SAFA on the line. Dominic, are we finally going to see uh, a top class uh, under 17 South Africa side turn out, uh, you know, in the old Bafana colours um, and, and do the country proud? Because that's what I've been waiting for for some time now. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, just as a, as a bit of some background, what uh, the new executive has, has, has put as a blueprint is that uh, you cannot have a, a, a proper Afana Afana side without a, a proper uh, development structures, and you cannot have a strong Afana Afana squad without having a, a strong junior teams. So, what we have done, I mean, what the new executive has done is to really pump a lot of resources in the junior structures, starting with, the, I mean, that uh, for your own information and for mm. your listeners, that uh, we have now started. Uh, the under-18 and under-15 uh, leagues throughout the 52 regions, throughout our 341 LFAs, throughout our nine provinces. And uh, this is done uh, across the board, both the boys and, 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 and the girls' uh, leagues. They are being played across uh, South Africa. Mm. And apart from that, you might know that we hosted uh, the national under-17 tournament in March uh, 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 in the, uh, at the next center in in, in Soweto, yep. where by <coughs> all the all the national teams, all the provincial teams, including some of the top four, uh, Premier Soccer League. That's uh, right. They invited. came over. I remember. I watched yes, it. Yeah. And, uh, and the first in first come out the winner. And it is from that tournament where most of the current under 17 squad were picked up by the current coach with Molesin Zeki. Hmm. And uh, for your own information, we are playing Botswana today in in Kaberon. And we are playing another friendly match on Sunday. Good. From Botswana, we go to Lesotho, where we are going to play Lesotho on Thursday, <coughs> the 10th of July. And then we play them again on the 13th of, of July, which is on a Sunday. We come back the following day, and then we leave for, 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 for Tanzania, where we are going to play uh, against Tanzania on Saturday in, in Dar es Salaam. And the return leg is scheduled to, to be played in Polukwane. Good. So how many games is that all together? We've got a, a pretty harsh schedule for our under-17s involving five games, a lot of travelling. Uh, it's, it's, it's a tough schedule, Neil. As you know, that uh, we are preparing for the <coughs> junior youth uh, championships, which are going to take place in Niger next year in April. And uh, part of that process is already starting with uh, the qualifying match against Tanzania. Yeah. So for us to give our youngsters uh, some really good uh, uh, practice sessions and to make them sure to make sure that they are they are thoroughly prepared, we have organised this uh, tight schedule so that they, by the time they meet Tanzania, they are a bit uh, battle hardened. So they are going to play two games against Botswana and two games against Lesotho, and then they leave uh, for for Dar es Salaam. So, Dominic, is, is it my fault that I haven't spotted enough of this over the last two years? When Gordon Iggerson took the job as Bafana coach, he told me categorically there was going to be reams of junior football and everyone was going to be playing the Bafana style. I just didn't see enough of it. Is it because, uh, you know, I'm not in the loop or, or is this is this under-17 thing the start of something big for Bafana? We'll be looking at under-13 teams, under-15 teams, under-17, under-19, under-20, and we will now start to see a lot more of Bafana junior sides under the new regime. Good question, Neil. And uh, as I said at the beginning of the interview, mm. that, uh, uh, the philosophy of the new executive is that you cannot have a, a strong Afana Afana side without uh, plowing a lot of uh, resources within the junior teams. And as I, as I told you earlier, that we had a, a SAFA under-17 tournament in, 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 in Soweto. We had the under-19 uh, tournament in, 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 in Bloomfontein. Mm. And also what we have decided to do is that uh, 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 part of us uh, traveling the same journey with the members of the media is that we want to invite you guys to be part of this process as well because what has been happening in the past is that uh, 
there has been something happening within the junior teams, but uh, nothing has been populated among the, the members of the media. And so what we have also decided to do is that uh, we take you along among uh, members, uh, members of the media to see what type of programs we are engaged in, what type of, of, of uh, matches we are preparing for yes. our junior teams. And uh, for starters, we would even want you, junior, you Neil, or one of your reporters uh, yeah. to, to come on the team to Tanzania which we, we will be very much grateful if you can give one of your reporters or yourself to be part of this process so that you can see what Safa is doing. Because in the past, there has always been talk that you know, Safa is doing nothing with regards to soccer development. And that there has been a lot of uh, programs which we have been engaged in. And, and as I say, we have been doing a lot with, the, with regards to the under-17, the under-19, the under-20. The women's team, actually, as we speak, they are, in, uh, they are playing friendly matches in, in, in Namibia, against Namibia, and from there they go to, to Zimbabwe in preparation for the African Women's Championships, which are scheduled for Namibia in October. So there is a lot of programs which we are, we, which we are undertaking, but because mostly members of the media are so engrossed with Wafana Wafana, some yeah. of these programs are, are deliberately ignored. Uh -uh. But as I say... I'm very grateful for, for, for people like you that he, you, have, you have taken time to look at uh, Safa's uh, junior programs and uh, other national teams apart from Afana Afana. Well, Dominic, you, you have a commitment from me right here and right now that I will come with you to Tanzania. I don't have a problem with that. I love junior football. I coach, as I've said earlier in this show, I coach under nines anyway. I love coaching football now that I'm too old and fat to actually play the game. Uh, and there's is, nothing. That is that, but, is, that is a deal on. I mean, I mean, when uh, now, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I, I'm giving you my undertaking that we are taking you to Tanzania, and I appreciate you accompanying the under 17 team to to Tanzania. I would, and, and I can also teach them to, to the long throw in that hits the far post. So I can still do that. <laughs> okay, and I, I, thank you. I would like nothing better. And this isn't bollocks. This isn't. This isn't me just saying. You know, uh, this is our commitment to development. I love junior football. I love to see kids coming. I, what, what, what football fan doesn't love to see an under-17 Bafana side go out against Tanzania trying to win to qualify for the tournament in Niger? We have to show passion for that level as well. There, there's quite a lot of information about Banyana Banyana, the women's team. There's loads about Bafana Bafana, and, and most of it is just to and fro. Show me your under-17s. Show me these Bidvest lads that beat uh, sides from, from, from some of the big foreign clubs uh, in March. I want to see these boys. I want to talk to them. I want to know that they have the, the emotional maturity. I want to know they've got the talent and the skill and the dedication. Samich Duty and I were just talking about this, and Willard Katsandi, the, the, the people that really care that want to play football, let's get into it. Uh, Dominic, don't ever see a journalist like myself as someone that's always negative, that's getting stuck in. All I wanted to see from the moment that Gordon Nickerson took the job was to see these young Bafana teams, to be invited to come and watch and to chat to these lads and see where they're going. That's my commitment to you, Dominic. True, I really appreciate that. And as I say, I'm saying it on air that uh, I want you or one of your journalists to be part of... Uh, this under-17 uh, uh, process, and uh, as I said to you, sometimes it's not about when you, when you guys criticize. It's not like we take it personally. You know, mm. sometimes it's for the love of the game. That's why you 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 criticize, you criticize us. Mm. But although sometimes the criticize the criticism can go overboard, but uh, <laughs> the criticism is always welcome. And uh, <laughs> I know you are one of the most passionate uh, soccer followers and for soccer journalists and. Uh, we take your your, your criticism to, to uh, as, a, as a as constructive criticism. Well, as long as you understand, Dominic, that I'm more critical of of England's football setup than I am of any other country in the world at the moment. <laughs> the, the way that they've let development fall apart, the way that they've allowed. Uh, the academies to, to take away some of the raw passion of junior football where I would have under 12 and under 14 sides uh, in, in Buckinghamshire in England and, and the academies wouldn't let them play wouldn't let them play football they, you know, they just went along and trained and did dilly dally tick attack of things I want to see a South but African under 17 oh. side play against Tanzania and Dar es Salaam or wherever it is and I want to see and be able to tell people, I'll take a video, I'll take my iPad, I'll video for Bulls Radio, I'll put it out on the blog, I'll put it out for 50,000 people a month to show them this is where we're going. This is the future. It's not just about, you know, Tumalene Kune and, and Simpiwe Shabalala and Andila Jolly. It's actually about lads who are coming through right now at the under-16, under-15, you're under-13 leagues. I want to see a little bit of that. Where can I go and see these games? Where can I get... I've got lads that, I, that I'd like people to have a look at. 
You know, under nine, so I know it's too young. But I, I do think that, that, that you have to remember that us journalists have a passion for football. It's not just about writing and criticising and of having course, a go at Gordon yeah, Nigerson. You've got to understand that. Look, as you say, Neil, correctly, that uh, everyone has to play, to play his party. You know, you members of the media have to play your party. You know, mm. the clubs as well. You know, as you can see that... Who are the more, who are the dominant uh, uh, teams in the World Cup as we speak? Mm. I mean, we are talking of the likes of the Spain, Argentina, Brazil, and it is also from their uh, top clubs where most of these uh, teams are also uh, developed. So, this is a process which involves everyone. It's not a process which you can only leave it to Safa to say no. Safa should develop players. It also entails you guys. It also entails. Uh, uh, club, uh, top clubs within the Premier and Soccer League, top clubs within the first division, clubs in the in the in the regions and clubs in the provinces. So it's a process which involves each and every South African you know, yes. to, develop, to develop develop these players. I think it should. I mean, when we sit here, we watch the Junior Springboks uh, go and play in you know in, in New Zealand and, and get to the final, uh, beaten by one point by England in the final. Tremendously unlucky. A nice mix in the side, and you look at that and I, and I think well. You know, have the cricket side, of the proteas, what are they like? They win the World Cup, don't they? With a lad who is living on my estate with me from Boys High, he captained that side, I can't remember his name. Mm. I want to see, I want to see Bafana Bafana, at least, you know, in Niger. Uh, and, and I want to be able to name, I want to be able to name the players. When someone says to me, Neil, we've got no future, South Africa's got no future. Some British journalist says to me, but this Bafana Bafana are rubbish now. And I can say to them, actually, mate, you haven't seen so-and-so playing un up front for the under-17s. He's six foot four and he can stick the ball in the net from 40 yards. That's the information I need. That's, the, that's what I want to do. I don't want that's to be what? slagging people off. I just want to see it. Just for your own information, Neil, is that uh, uh, for the squad which has travelled to Botswana, we've got some very big names. Uh, Monjim Porto from S Super Sport Academy. We've got Cesar Ske from Chiefs Academy. We've got Sanele Chavalala from PDFS Academy. Yeah. We've got the likes of Konane Lom Tweneng from the School of Excellency, Tato Ramakhovdi from the School of Excellency. We also have a guy called Kanyiso Manyo, by the way. Kanyiso Manyo from the Eastern Cape province is a, is a, is a top notch striker. He's the son of. Uh, of, of Patrick Mayer, I'm sure I still remember. I remember, Patrick yeah. Lady. Yeah. That's yes, interesting. Son, who is, the, who is the, a top notch striker who is in Botswana now with the under 17. His name is Kanyiso Mayo. What okay. a talent. And uh, these are some of the players, uh, uh, Neil, whom I would want you to engage when you are with the uh, under 17 and, and, and uh, give them some exposure. These are the future of Afana Afana and uh, big talents. Absolutely. And I'd like to teach them as well how to deal with, with the media. I mean, because it's one of the things that. That, that, that young players have to do as well is deal with the horrible people like me that come up and say, you know, why don't you use your left foot more and, and, and why I'm have you signed for Vits when you could have gone I'm, to Chiefs? I'm, I'm sure that is one of the issues which you have to talk offline. I'd like to also engage you so that you, you can also actually, I mean, take our uh, players, uh, some of the Wanyana Wanyana players, some of the under-17 players, under-20 players uh, through the media training. If you are uh, available, I, I mean, it's, but it's something which we can, you and me, we can talk offline. Yeah, well, but I mean, I tell you what, I spoke to Samik Duty today, and I spoke to Willard Katsandi, and I've spoken to many sportsmen from many countries. They're both brilliant, mate, and and they both came across really well today. But anything that that you can do to make South African players more accessible, to make them, I mean, both these lads this morning were so enthusiastic about the future and about mm. about where South Africa is going. I don't think you have to worry too much about the media training. I, I think what we need to get to is, is, is watch these guys in action, make their names known at the age of 17 instead of 22, 23. Because when you look at Rodriguez in the World Cup, when you look at Neymar, they're 22. Mm. And they're already what, global superstars. They were known in their country at the age of 15. Suarez was famous at 14 in Uruguay. So we need to get these names out there. You need to let me video while they're playing. And will you email me, please, the result from Botswana? just so I can keep tabs on, on their form as they head no, towards this qualifier. Dominic. Actually, if I had known, I, I should have requested that one of your journalists should have accompanied uh, uh, the team to Botswana and to, 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 to Lesotho, but it doesn't matter as you gave me an undertaking on, the, on, the, on air that uh, either you or one of your journalists is going to accompany the team to Tanzania. Yep. I'm holding you on to, 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 to that. Uh, A cast that iron coach. commitment that, that comfort or I... <laughs> Comfort case or I, or even Mark Fish, will come with you to Tanzania. I, it's going to be me. I mean, I'm the first choice, obviously. I'm not going to let Comfort go in, unless I absolutely can't and my wife changed me to the kitchen. 
I will be there. Give me, you, can, you can only give me one of your colleagues if you if you fell sick. Absolutely yeah, right. If I if I lose an arm or a leg or, or something. <laughs> Okay, okay, so Dominic, let's let's make that a firm commitment. We'll, we'll stay in touch. We'll make sure that our, our followers and listeners on Twitter and, and here uh, keep up with us as this under-17 side takes shape and as I'm able to explain to people what kind of talent we've got coming through because that's my aim. That's all that I care about is show me your under-17s. I appreciate that, Neil. I'm, I'm going to fax you. I'm going to text you. I'm going to send you by email the, the, the entire squad now and you can go through it and uh, once you are in camp with them, then you can uh, actually do profiles of each and every one of these guys uh, so that we by the time they develop into under 20, they develop into the under 23s and finally into the Wafana Wafana mm. squad. Uh, no one is surprised that uh, where did these guys come from? Exactly. You know? Exactly, yeah. Dominic. That's exactly the point, mate. No <coughs> one was surprised when, when, when oh, well, I mean, we're a bit surprised, when Rodriguez came through in place of Radamel Foco because everyone knew that he was a magnificent player at the age of 17. And he's <coughs> been moving up through, through Argentina and then into Porto and then into Monaco. And suddenly he bursts on the world scene. People knew, people were watching, and I want to watch. Dominic Chimfarvi, thanks so much for talking to me. I will not let you escape this commitment, and I won't escape this commitment. We will do the under-17s together, and we'll look at, at the other age groups as well. Let's get Bafana started at a young age. Thank you, Dominic Chimfarvi. Uh, thank you very much, and have a good day, Neil. Thank Great you. stuff. Bye. That, Bye. that is, guys, a, a firm commitment that we're going to find these young Bafana stars. We're going to watch them play. We're going to watch them struggle all, all the way up to Tanzania and uh, get involved you know, at the top level from the age of 16, 17. Falls.co.za.